What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of So How'd You Get Here? I'm Angelo. I'm Tony. How you doing today? Um, if this is your first time tuning into our show, uh, we are a podcast that dives into backstories. Uh, we like to know what got people where they are. Did they get there? And if they did, what choices did they make? to help get them there. So today's guest, um, she started in Vegas and um, just climbed the ladder, works on TV shows. Um, she has worked with Dancing on the Stars, or Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Uh, she's the right hand for uh, Mr. Lance Bass. Uh, yeah, that's right, from NSYNC. I'd like to welcome to the show today, Lisa Del Campo. Hello. Hello, Hello Lisa. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming here and representing Washington State, of where course. I'm from. I always represent Washington State. You're from Everett. Yep. Ooh. Everett I sure Washington. Am. Everett Washington. My and she brought a really cute dog. Yeah, that's kind of cheating because yeah. your <laughs> podcast is already cooler than everyone else's. I love it. You brought a dog. What's the dog's name? Leona. 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 Yeah, she came with that name, and it was really weird because a couple days before I started fostering her, I was at a friend's house, and we were talking about Leona Helmsley. Yeah. And I thought she was the woman with all the shoes, but that was Amel DeMarco. So, ah. and then I get this dog and her name's Leona. I was like, it's meant to be. And it's I'm meant not, to be. I can't change it. It's too cute. It's I too cute. So it's for so everyone cute. listening only on the podcast, this is where you'd want to go to YouTube yeah. and actually and watch, watch it so that you can see the adorable little dog, Leona. Leona, yes. All right. We'll pause at any point <laughs> if Leona needs a break. All right? Yes. Perfect. We will. All no. right. So <laughs> let's start. Let's just go right in logical order. Yeah. Give us the beginning Mm -hmm. This is your origin story. Okay. Hit us with some facts. Yeah. So um, I got my degree in public relations from Central Washington University. Cool, cool. What year is this? Uh, this was two, I think I graduated in 2001. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. And I'm then the 2000 kid. You are? Yeah. From oh, college yeah. or high school? Both. I did running start. Oh, I did not. I, I tried. But you know what it is. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. But you're more successful than me, so clearly no. Running Start has nothing to do with success. No. Um, and then I wanted to work in entertainment publicity, and I moved. I moved to Los Angeles actually a year before Las Vegas. Oh, okay. But I interned only and worked a couple jobs, and I just, I was like, I'm not making enough money. So me and my roommate, Sarah, who she wanted to be an actress, moved from Orlando, we decided to go to Vegas because if I went home to Everett, I'd never leave again. Right. Because, I mean, I love it there. The only reason I moved was to work in entertainment. So we did Las Vegas for a couple years. I worked at a place called PR Plus, and the Hard Rock Hotel was my main client. And, uh, yeah, so Lance was in town. He came to a show opening that we were running. I wasn't even the person on the account, but she uh, she had another event. We were really small, but we had like 10 clients each. So I... <clears throat> I think I, we figured out that this was the fall of 05? This was, this was actually the spring. This was March of This 05. was March, okay. Met Lance at a show, and we became friends, and then we kept in touch after that. Right. And so anytime him and his friends would come to Vegas, they would you know, call me and ask if I could, you know, set them up at a club or right, right. whatever. And then, yeah, that's how I met you in the fall. Yeah. And then in the winter, he, his assistant was leaving and he asked me if I'd move to LA and work for him in, I think it was February 1st was my first day of 06. That's crazy. Cause I've known Lance since 2001 and I happened to go to Vegas on this trip in the fall of 05 mm -hmm. and I met Lisa that night. And then next, thing you know, I think the next time I saw you, you were in LA. Yeah. And you're like, by the way, this is where I live now. And I I'm know. like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And um, I thought I would do it for a few years and then like maybe go back to PR because I was burned out after two years. But 15 years later, yeah, right I'm here. still here. <laughs> I think that has a lot to do with this term that I think you coined called Pop tart, pop tart. Well, I mean, I don't know if I coined it. I'd uh, like to think so too. Okay. Well, Let's, on we'll this show, there's yeah. no one here to oh, disagree good. with you. Yeah, I did. So coin it. I'm just gonna say you also <laughs> invented gravity and time travel. Yeah, I did. Those, okay. Those are those are for sure. Absolutely. And then, um, why don't you tell us what that means and what it is about you that goes into that? Um, a pop tart is just kind of like anybody that loves pop culture. Um, boy bands, Britney Spears, you know, Beverly Hills, 90210. Oh, yeah. Stay by the bell. So yeah. um, what, at what point in your glorious career mm -hmm. or, or life on this planet did you realize, I love this and I maybe want to do that? How old were you at that point? I mean, like work in entertainment? 
Yeah. E- even being a fan, a, a pop tart, if yeah. you will. Um, I mean, I've been a fan of TV and movies and music since I was a kid. There you go. Like, I started watching, like, Dynasty in Dallas with my mom when mm-hmm. I was, like, five years old. Ah. You know? And I, I've just always loved it. I've, oh, like, I love trivia. Pop culture trivia is my favorite. Um, yeah, so I knew as a kid that I, like, wanted to work in this industry. But then, like, I you know, I got into other things too. Like at one point I wanted to be a lawyer. At one point I wanted to be a psychologist, but then it all came back to entertainment. So in the mid nineties, when you're like a diehard Backstreet Boys NSYNC fan, did you ever think that you'd be working for one of the... No, no, no. Hold on. She's wiggling. Not a problem. She's thirsty. Um, anyway. Yeah. No, I would never, I mean, no, no, it's crazy. When I met, um, new kids on the block, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. 10 year old Lisa would die right now. Yeah. I just, it, it, cause you know, being from Washington state, we live so far from everything. I mean, we did have Seattle and concerts to go through there in Tacoma, but you never think that you're going to like live somewhere where, right. You know, it's everyday life to run into Harry yeah. Styles at the grocery store. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. You know what I mean, the people I saw on TV, I now start to work with. That's, that was it's weird. weird. It's, it's weird. still weird. Yeah. Right. It's still it's weird. So weird. So yeah, I, um, I, didn't no, I would have never thought that I would have been here. What's the what's the process like for the listeners and the viewers? Mm-hmm. So, Lance, this was after the height of InSync. Lance mm-hmm. is kind of starting that second part of his career, I guess you yep. could say. You're now his personal assistant. What like what does that entail? Like, kind of tell like are what? you are you just getting his dry cleaning? Are you actually helping him like book events? Oh yeah. Like, what's the? Um, it's so funny because. Whenever you think of assistant or before I got in this career, I think they get dry cleaning, right? Right, right. And I think I've maybe got his dry cleaning 10 times in 15 years. Like he just isn't a dry <laughs> For cleaning For his birthday. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but so no, I like, it's more of a life management. Okay. You know, like I get to work every day and I usually will feed the dogs. Um, and then I go right into emails mm. and I get anywhere from like on a low day, 30 on a high day, 60 to 70. Okay. Um, but your job doesn't stop, obviously. it. I, I'm i only there from 10 to 2 every day. But my job doesn't stop at 2. Of course. You know, or it's kind of whenever he needs it's me. It's kind but of a 24-7 almost. It is. But now that we're older, it's not as, uh, I don't work as much. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Right? Because before it's like, we're also friends too. So we yeah. go out and we socialize and... Now we're not as social, <laughs> so, so it's a little bit easier. Um, I book flights. I keep a schedule, um, schedule meetings. Uh, what else do I do? Um, I'll take the dogs to the groomers, mm. you know, the vet, all that stuff. Um, if something breaks in the house, obviously get somebody to fix it. So right, you're just right. kind of po- problem solving. Yeah. A lot of problem solving. Are you ever the voice of reason to say, like, because you read all these emails and he's mm-hmm. just like, hey... So and so wants me to go do this thing. You're like, eh, I don't know if you should do that one. Yes, I do. I mean, he's pretty <laughs> obviously well seasoned with right. that kind of stuff. But yeah, but I'm to the point now where if I get a request and I know he's not going to want to do it, yeah. I just I'm like, no, because then it also alleviates pressure off him if I like you know weed out all the right. things that he doesn't have time to do before I bring it to him. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you're doing this the last 15 mm-hmm. years. What kind of personal goals have you set for yourself that you kind of like, well, I can also, you know, do the, like, I'm meet, you're meeting all these people, mm-hmm. you know, because obviously he's a high profile person. Right. I mean, I don't, I've never been one to aspire, like, to run my own company mm-hmm. or be a CEO. I just, that's never been me. I don't, I don't want to be somebody else's boss. Got I'm it. just, it's not my personality. I like to be a worker bee, I say. Okay. <laughs> and and we need all, like, we need a queen bee. We need the workers. We need everything. So I, I'm i perfectly happy in my career as it is, really. Um, I have started, like, a podcast, and that's fun because I just, I like to talk to people. And mm-hmm. I've done, you know, several. I was on Lance's live radio show for, gosh, I think it was five years so yeah, it's just was like, that the dirty uh, dirty pop dirty pop uh huh yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so we did that that was 2012 to 16 or something yeah something like that but before that he had um the pop 10 and that was just once a week uh, okay but the, then when it went to dirty pop it was five days a week two hours a day live Oof, that's that a lot rough. of work but it was fun yeah time went by really fast um 
So yeah, so as far as like personal goals, like I'd like to get married someday. I don't really date, but, <laughs> but I want him to magically appear. Yeah, right. Um, I'm not going to have kids. I like being an aunt. Uh-huh. I'm a better aunt. Yeah, than, yeah, yeah. Not that I wouldn't be a good mom. I think I'd be a good mom, but I think I'd be a really bad helicopter mom. Like one uh, of those moms that's just like, you know, hovering over my child. Like I, with this dog, with Leona, I never let her out of my sight for more than like two seconds. So yeah, I'm now, a better aunt. Stop the, trying to manage my life. Mom. I know. <laughs> during the last 15 years with, with Lance, wasn't there, because I, because we're friends and I know mm-hmm. you, wasn't there a time where you actually worked for other people as assistants? Yeah, because. And you don't have to name names, but like, yeah. what, what's th- that experience like and. Was it worse? Was it better? Well, um, it was hard because he wanted to live half his time in New York and half his time here. And I did not want to live in New York. Got it. Um, and so. Was this after he did hairspray? Yes, because I did live in New York when he did hairspray. Right. We, I, we lived there for six months. And I liked that. But I liked that I was coming, coming back, home after six months. You know, it wasn't like I was married to New York forever. And it was a great experience. I had so much fun. Um, but. My family, as you know, we're on the same coast now. So that's, I liked it that way. Um, So yeah, so when he did that, I I worked part-time for Cheryl Burke from Dancing with the Stars, who I loved. It was great. It's very different working for a woman versus a man, though. What's the difference? Like... um, Hair and makeup for Lance takes 15 minutes tops. <laughs> That's like if you're going really slow. Yeah, but he steps out of his house as like GQ model. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he's got pretty much, he's got yeah. great skin. Understand. And he does his own hair. So, I mean, his it's easy. Women take a couple of hours because, you know, makeup and hair and, you know, so that's really different. Um, but I liked doing it for both. It was fun. It's just hard because... How were you managing doing it both? Was this only when he was in New York? No, it was both, but like he understood yeah. because I was just part-time with him. So oh, like he understands. Um, so that went well, but then he moved back. So it's like, yeah. obviously, I'm going to go back with him full-time. Um, I'm trying to think. Yes, I've worked for other people who I can't. Well, I can say Iggy Azalea because I didn't sign an NDA. Oh, okay. Um, and I only worked for her for three days and never met her. <laughs> I never met her oh. in person. I Tell us hired, about those three days. Yeah. yeah, well, I got hired immediately. Like, her management company didn't even, like, ask to see my references. They knew I'd worked for Lance, but, okay. like, but did I really? Like, who knows? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I worked for her, and that I wouldn't have lasted. Like, she was too demanding, it was um, in three days. She was that demanding. Yes. Well, the day I was supposed to meet her, she wanted me to bring her these hot dogs from this like food truck, <laughs> and I called before I went to the food because you know I had to find out where they were, and they were not working. They were like off for a private party, and I told I called her management and I was like, "Look, the hot dogs like it's not going to work out." Sadly, so I picked up some other food, but she was real pissed about the hot dogs, not at me, but at the the company or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I didn't have to go in. She was like, you know, basically don't come in. Yeah. And She's like, you can deliver the hot dogs. No, so you, you're done. You're done. Um, and so I was supposed to go over the next day and like nobody would communicate with me. Like it was going through too many channels and I was like, you know what? Maybe 10 years ago yeah. I would have like been okay with this, but not now. It's this, not a good fit. This smacks of Devil's Wear Prada. Yes, yes. And then... Uh, I worked for another female pop star who it just too high maintenance for yeah. me. Lance is not high maintenance and I got spoiled. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Had I started out with these people, way better. And then go to him because I'd be like, oh my God, this is a dream. But yeah. Or you might have way. actually gotten so miserable you quit. That's true. So That's I'm true. glad you have a good person that you work with. That I you know. Enjoy. It sounds like you actually know what you want and you're getting to do it. Yeah. I mean, I think That's so. really rare. Yeah, no, it is. And also, I don't know if... It's like this for you guys. But as I got older, the work-life balance really, it means a lot to me. I'd rather make 50 grand a year and be, be happy, happy with my yeah. life than make millions of dollars and be, and miserable. be miserable. Yep. Lance and I did take a break um, for two years. It wasn't meant to be like a break. It was just meant to be, we're not working together anymore. We're just friends. Mm-hmm. It was the amicable and everything. We'd just been together for so long that we were just like, we need a break. Yeah. You know, because you do become like... When you, you've been at a job for so long, you get complacent. 
your boss kind of gets complacent and it's just, you need like a recharge. Right. And so we took two years off and then um, Michael, his husband, uh, had a minor surgery and I had to pick him up because Lance, I think, was out of town or mm -hmm. something. And he was all drugged up on, you know, happy pills. <laughs> and he said, uh, Lance is thinking about getting an assistant again. And he mentioned you. And I was like, she's never coming back. And, I, and he was like, would you come back? And I said, yeah, I would come back now. And I've been with him ever since. That was 2016. Was so. it because you guys, was the friendship getting in the way? Um, Yeah, I just think too, it wasn't really that the friendship was getting in the way. It was just... My priorities were messed up at the time, I think. Um, and I was hanging out with people that didn't really better me, okay. if that makes hmm. sense. And so I think that that kind of got in the way. And it was just, I wasn't loving my job anymore. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't loving probably having me at the point of my life that I was in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So yeah, it was just... To save our friendship is why we right, stopped right, working right. together. And it did. It was healthy. It was, I think that I grew so much as a person. He was starting a, a different chapter in his life. Yeah. You know, he got married. Got married, yeah. And um, I think that we both just were at a, well, me, I can't really speak for him. I was just in a much better place when I came back. And so it just, it's been great ever since. Oh, good. So yeah, it was, it was good. Mm -hmm. So what's been, so since you've been back, what's, mm -hmm. is it? Is it more, um, what's the word? Like, are you doing more, like, personal? Like, is he, what? Because he's, I feel like he's busier now than ever. He is. Yeah. Um, it's the same. I mean, I'm doing the same stuff. I'm actually doing a little bit less because he's hired someone to be the head of his production and development. Got it. I was helping with that before, and it was just, I was doing so many things. It was, like, it was too much. So now it's more, like, targeted. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's. I like what I'm doing better now. Got it. Yeah. So how did you end up getting <laughs> on The Circle? Oh. By uh, the way, The Circle, season two, Netflix. Yes. Check it this, out. Lisa This is, was not in the bio Lisa you is sent a me. <laughs> Lisa is I a I am contestant. very disappointed. You watched it? So I wanted to be on Big Brother for many, many years. I watched it since season two. And then as I got older, I'm like, I can't do this show. Like, <laughs> I, you know, those endurance competitions. Yeah. I'm like falling off the first minute. There's just, I don't, I'm not a, an outdoorsy sportsy <laughs> person. I'm just like, I'm not. Right? So Spartan race you and me next weekend. Yeah. No way. Never. Like I don't run unless you're chasing me with a knife. Like I'm just not, I'm not made for the outdoors, you know? So, um, then the circle comes out like a couple years ago, my friend from England texted me and he was like, you've got to watch this show. Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's so like hard to explain and when he told me about it, I was like, oh, that sounds awful, but okay, I'll try it. Got hooked the first episode. Loved G it give so the much. audience a little bio of kind of what it is. Oh, gosh. Okay, so it's kind of like Big Brother in that it's a social experiment. Yep. But every contestant has their own apartment or flat, since it's British. Um, they have their own flat, and you communicate through this platform called The Circle, kind of like a Facebook, I guess. Okay. You never see any of the other contestants until the very end. So when I went in, I played as Lance. So yeah, so there's also a catfish, catfish. kind of element to it. Yes. So you don't have to go in as you, you can mm -hmm. go in as someone else. Yes. And the other contestants think that you're that person. Or they don't. Or they don't. Or they don't. Or they don't. And you basically want to be the most popular because every couple of days there's ratings. So they rate you from they like you the best to they like you the worst or you know there's strategy that goes into it too. and the worst like, and the worst gets voted off yeah you kinda. get yeah you get blocked, blocked. it was so funny because i kept using big brother terminology as well and they were like can you say that again it's actually got blocked not evicted and i was like oh yeah <laughs> different <laughs> show okay. um so yeah so and then the person that's the most liked you went 100 grand which would have been amazing yeah um so at my birthday party in 20, March of 2020, my friend brought his friend who is a casting producer for The Circle. And we were talking about it and I was like, oh my God, I want to be on the show. He's like, really? And I was like, yeah, I really do. And Lance was like, she needs to be on, like get her on the show. And <laughs> so he's like, okay, well let's audition you. And so I went through the process of auditioning, which was like tapes and psychological evaluations and, you know, uh, like personality questions and yeah, and so that, I think I started that in 
June. So when you auditioned for a reality show like The Circle, mm -hmm. did you know going in, I'm not going to play Lisa? Um, was that like a con like, or, I or did they, with it. or did the producers be like, you should go as Lance? No, because I I gave them the option. I was like, I can play as me, or I can play as Lance. Like, and they obviously, you know, thought Lance was that would be an interesting sort of angle, right? And so, yeah, I I went on as him. My favorite part was I think it was the was it maybe the second episode or third episode when you're when you're on when they said. When people were like, because I guess, yeah, they like communicate through like a social platform. Mm -hmm. So they're like, circle, tell me, you know, I want to connect mm -hmm. with Lance. Lance, why would you need $100,000? I know. And that was like. My, <laughs> why are you on this show? Like you, you're a world renowned pop star. Like, why do you need a hundred grand? I know. And uh, when they asked me, you know, what would you do with the hundred grand? Yeah. I like, I was so panicked because I hadn't been in that long at that point, like right. an hour. Yeah. And. I was like, well, so I, being Lisa, I was like, I can't say I'm going to give all the money to charity because say, I mean, this is really unlikely to happen, but say that I won mm -hmm. and I come out, it's not Lance. That I mean, I'd feel bad if everybody thought they were giving me the money to donate to like right. homeless children or, you know, yeah. cancer or something. So I was like, I'm not going to say that even though it would have been wise, but whatever. So I was joking and I was like, Oh, I'm going to pay for an sync tour or whatever, which like I should have put like a, a laughing emoji or something, right. but they thought that like I was serious. Yeah. And I was like, first of all, a hundred grand wouldn't buy them one tour date. Exactly. No. I remember wouldn't buy them an outfit. No. Couldn't you have gone with the, uh, cause I saw the doc on mm -hmm. um, the manager who yeah. didn't do Loophole. them right at all yeah. Yeah. and said, Hey, I got taken advantage of. I've lost everything. This is a chance to restart and rebuild from what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, I could have done that. I just, I didn't even think it. Was of it. So quick. it was yeah. so quick. That's, yeah, hindsight is always right. easy. I know. And so... Um, but there was a contestant on the show that was like, I'm a single father. That's the worst answer ever. I know. And I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's a bad answer. And yeah. especially since I didn't put anything like that, that made it seem like a joke. Right. But then I was like, the fact that they thought I was serious is kind of odd, mm. but okay. So yeah, that, that's what happened there. So for the viewers that have not watched The Circle yet, how far did you go on the show? I made it to the finals. The final uh, four, four or five. Have you well, ever thought about a career as a FBI undercover agent? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be a criminal profiler, but... You can ah. you can double as someone, and you got all the stats, and you know how to manage, and Mike... Oh, really? You think so? I mean, so? unless it was as Lance. Oh, I could right. do that, but anybody else... Not so no. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you yeah. got to the final mm -hmm. round, final four, were you like, I might actually win $100,000? Uh, or were no. you just playing it for the game? Well, because, oh, sorry, I forgot to say this part. So I did get blocked as Lance. Um, it was, I don't know how long I'd been in at that point. Mm -hmm. But so I got blocked. And when I, you go meet somebody, you can meet any of the contestants that you want. So I went to meet um, this guy, River. When I got into the apartment, he wasn't there. And I was like, that is really weird. Maybe like production has him up on the roof getting fresh mm. air or whatever. And then this other guy, or this guy walks in and I was like, River? Because I thought he was catfishing. And he was like, no, I'm Jack. And he, I forget who he thought I was. And it wasn't who that was, obviously. And the producers were like, okay, you guys sit down. And we were like, all right. And the TV comes on and it was like, you two have the opportunity to join forces and play as an, as somebody else. And we're like, oh yeah, we'll do it. So it was this. Um, it looked like an older man, and the only requirements were we had to use this guy's pictures, and he had to be a psychic. Ah. And so, but which was great because we had already got, gathered so much information from the contestants before, so it would have been believable that we would have been psychic. Right. Um. So yeah. So we played together, and we made it to the. Finale. finale but since we were the newest player we were the last player to come in basically i see i was like there's no way we're gonna win because everybody else had been there since the beginning so colonel yeah. mustard in the library yeah. with the candlestick yeah it's the, pretty much it's the 2021 <laughs> version of clue i love the clue. circle uh so fun so yeah so we made it that would far. you ever do another reality show it depends on what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Not Big Brother because no. again, I would not win. And why I put myself through that right. if I'm like not going to win? Um, yeah, I just don't know what. Maybe like a cooking show. There you go. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, celebrity dating game. 
Cele- oh my God. <laughs> well, I'd have to be a celebrity. You are a celebrity. Toss you are. No. No. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And like a celebrity you, is like somebody with like Will you sign my talent. piece of paper later, please? I really appreciate that. <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. I'll watch your dog for you when you're away on vacation. Oh, I would love that. She would be loved, I'm sure. <laughs> so I know you personally. I know you're like an avid book reader and oh, yes. you're obsessed with all these things. You also like murder mystery kind of shows. Yep. Um, have you ever thought about writing your own? You know, I have not thought about writing my own. What I my dream job, dream Let's job. Let's do it. What, what what is it? Is reading. Sorry, Lance. You're, you're, Sorry, you're Lance. You're not her dream job. <laughs> no, no. He, he knows this, and he's like, if you ever get this job, I don't know if Lance is ever going to listen or watch this, but <laughs> I'm just going to send him this sound yeah, bite. It's going to be not a the dream job. <laughs> he knows. That I always say my favorite job was being a barista. Like I, it, I drive through coffee stand just because it was so easy and like. I really just loved it, you know, because the thing with being a personal assistant, it's like when you get off work, you can't forget about it till the next day, right? Right. Working in coffee, it's like once I was done, didn't have to worry about it till the next day or the next time that I worked. Um, But no, I do love my job with him. Uh, But my dream, dream would be to read manuscripts to adapt to say this would be good for film and television. That's like my dream. Oh, we need to talk. Have you read Devil in the White City? I'm halfway through I did, it right now. yes, yes. It's, I think Leo DiCaprio has the rights yeah. to that. Yeah, H.H. Yes. H. Holmes, Tesla. I'm mm-hmm. going through that right now because it's about Chicago oh, in the 1900s. Oh, it's so good. The World's Fair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, yeah. I, I read, my goal um, is I try to read 100 books a year. Wow. I fell a little That's more short than last year. That's a lot. Yeah, I, I love reading. Like, I just, I can't put it. Is put it Washington down. State or Maybe. is it just... Breathe smart people. <laughs> I, well, hey, I, I'm just kidding. You don't say smart and my name are not together, but no. for yourself, sure. I know people are like, you read that much? And I'm like, well, I'm not reading War and Peace. I'm reading right. like The Girl Next Door or, you know, yeah. what was that? No, The Girl on the Train. Yeah. Or like Gone, you know, I like gone thrillers. Girl, yeah. I love um, biographies, you know, stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. All I right. love reading. All right. All right. <laughs> I think you and Lance should team up and, and write a book. No, he, no. We should team up. Okay, Lance, could, is, Lance is too busy. Wait, Washington Lance State representing busy. right here. Come on. <laughs> I would love that. I have an idea for children's books, but... Um, yeah. Like I scary haven't. stories kind of... Oh, no. It, it's um, like travel, like traveling. It's oh. called The Adventures of Georgia, The Traveling Peach. <laughs> oh, like James and the Giant Peach, but yeah. different. Okay. But yeah, so um, that would be fun. I would like to do kids' books. Um, what do you have on the horizon? Like, what's coming up for you? Um, well, I still am doing my podcast, yep. Laugh Out and Loud with Lisa. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Say that one more time. Oh, yeah. I still have my podcast, Laugh Out Loud with Lisa. Not still. It's like six episodes in. <laughs> um, where I just, I've been interviewing my circle castmates. Um, we talk about like our experience and then like stuff that makes us laugh. Yeah. And I make everybody tell me a funny story. Are you, is there like a friend group of, of other assistants that you are? Yes. know of and or is there like a text chain going around where we have a massive email that we've had for years um yeah it's uh it was kind of started by kathy griffin's old assistant okay. tiffany and um i'm in it and kate hudson's assistant goldie hans assistant gwen stefani's assistants in there that um, is a powerhouse right there. there yeah we have a lot but the the funny thing is with an assistant's like group to get together is so hard because people are like, I have to cancel. I have to cancel yeah. because schedules. Yeah. But, um, but it's cool. Like we, um, we use each other a lot for, is there a good moving company that can move somebody cross country <laughs> or like is practical there, things? Yes. Practical yeah. things. We, um, we, we do that all the time. Like, like, Hey, can I borrow your private jet? I know. Because, right. <laughs> Cause we're going to Turks and Caicos and our flight just got canceled. No. It's, wow. I mean, it's a great resource yeah, for I mean, sure. For sure. It's like trying to get together the cast of oceans 11. Very true. <laughs> it can be done though. It can, it can be done. done. If you are the Jerry Weintraub of I'm, that group. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I wish I was, but I'm not. All right. I mean, I think that'd be a fun, you should just do an assistance podcast. I know. See, I've Absolutely. thought about this. But all the good stuff. You can't say. You can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, good point. You know what I mean? But it's good funny point. because a lot of my like assistant horror stories have nothing to do with Lance. Right. It has to do with the stuff that happens around us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, But you still can't talk about. No, I mean, 
Yeah. I'm saying in general. Yeah, I mean yeah. in general. Yeah. Yes. Privately you can, but not not publicly for to right. be posted right. for all of the world to see. Right. But like we we have more funny stories, I guess, that like like one of the first events I went to with him was an Emmys party. And um it was at a restaurant called Republic. Yeah, oh yeah. That. You remember Republic? Yeah. And so they had a giant red carpet outside and uh he he drove, he had an escalate at the time. And so he gets out of the car and starts walking to the carpet. And I think it was Jason Ritter saw him. And so they're like catching up, but he forgot to put the car in park. <laughs> and so I'm rolling down the street in the passenger side, the valet is running to chase the car. He had no idea that it was going on. So like stuff like that happens to us a lot. So by the way, story. we're looking for a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, we we not heard him. you're a good driver. <laughs> no, it's he, uh, we're it, uh, Nobu and we were outside and Eva Longoria happened to be waiting for her car too and they were friends you know they're talking and so <laughs> he's like oh the car's here so we go to the car and we get in and I'm like why are there Eva Longoria headshots all over the, the floor we were in her car they had the exact same car that literally was an episode of Entourage Oh, was it? Yeah. Wow. Oh Where my God, that's Ari so Gold funny. gets in, he, they're at what restaurant they're at, but they're getting the wrong car. They drive home mm -hmm. and he can't find his like briefcase that has like uh -huh. all these like scripts in it that no one's supposed to read. Oh, no. Yeah. And they end up calling <laughs> up the, and it's like crazy. That yeah, was like, no, that almost, happened to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was so embarrassed. And I'm like, I mean, it's not that's like. It's not the worst thing ever. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's a funny story. But did Eva get in his car and drive away? Was she, or did no, someone figure it, it out? It, we figured it oh, out okay. after I was like, oh, why are these headshots in the car? <laughs> then we figured it out and we swapped. So oh. Eva Longori carries around a lot of headshots in her car. Got she it. did at that time, okay. yes. Got Perfect. It. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I know. I don't. I don't have one. But that's another story. You will no, once kidding. we write our book together and launch a TV show. Yeah. Perfect. That would be amazing. Would I would be amazing. love that. I got mm -hmm. you. I got you. <laughs> um, we were talking before we got on mm -hmm. that we knew some other assistants that are celebrity assistants. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about getting like into production with one of their projects? Like, is it that, so like if Lance has a new reality show or TV mm -hmm. show that he's pitching to someone, like, would you, would you ever try to get yourself attached? Like, do you ever come to him with ideas? Um, yeah. Like one of, uh, we're still actually, we get interest in it every once in a while. Um, is a project that I thought about, you know, in 2007. Okay. And Lionsgate, bought it but then like didn't never developed it, it. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. so i mean i probably can't say it that's just okay i don't want people to steal yeah no, no. i was more curious mm -hmm. as to other than just being his assistant mm -hmm. have you ever branched out and hey by the way i got this really cool idea and you know yep. a lot of people and mm -hmm. you're repped by big people mm -hmm. can we move this along yeah i mean he definitely is open when i have ideas yeah. but um like I have always been into true crime because being from Washington State, like we had Ted Bundy, the Green River Killer, like I always found it so fascinating. And so I was on the true crime train in like 1989, you know? <laughs> and now- As a seven-year-old. When it rains a lot and there's not really anything to do, apparently people just go, well, I'll become a serial killer. Exactly. That's what my state- yeah. We Pearl Jam- Starbucks and Ted Bundy. That's what yeah. Washington is known for. It's true. And Boeing or and something Boeing like that. And Nordstrom. I mean, we have so many Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, right. and Starbucks. And Starbucks. And Starbucks. That's a big one. Um, but yeah, so uh, I had all these true crime ideas. And he was like, let's pitch them. Let's pitch them. And it's like, it was too late. Because by then, everyone was like uh, on the train. So that was pretty annoying. But, you know, what can you do? <laughs> well, will you wait a few years when it comes back around That's to being true. popular again? Mm -hmm. And then we go make it happen. There you go. I like that plan. What do, what you know what? Do? Let's take 30 seconds and talk about this thing that is crawling up. Leona, she's so sweet. I, um, I'm... Leona, I, Leona, can you um, say something for us into the podcast, please? Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, yes. So knowing you and knowing, <laughs> and knowing Lance and Michael, so they... <laughs> All their dogs have been adopted, correct? Yeah, so, uh -huh. so I kind of feel like it's a, yes. like a rite of passage and as you bring dogs into the house. Lance is fostering her sister ah. for friends of ours. Oh, she like she wants to be a star. Star. She's um, allowed to be on the desk. Yeah. You put her right up there, front and oh, center. <laughs> she's she's trying to talk now. Lay down oh. some grass. Oh, no, <laughs> no, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> she's by Lay down some tracks for us. I Come on, know. Leona. Oh, she's so cute. I love her. Like I've never had my own dog right. before. 
So it's very hard, like being responsible for something that's like living and breathing yeah. is hard. That can't be harder oh. than being a manager for a celebrity. That's, well, yes, or, or an assistant. Oh, hello. Um, I mean, I take care of his dogs, of course, but this is like, yeah, like, it's weird. How it's, old is she? She's um, three and a half months. Um, so she's a baby. Yeah. Her ears, hopefully, I don't want her ears to go up, but they probably are going to. But yeah, I love dogs. I love any, like, furry animal. Snakes are the ones that I do not mess with. I was just going to say, so we have a snake. Or... <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> I'm like, well, I had a really traumatizing thing happen to me as a child with snakes. So um, I... So did Indiana Jones. I know. I haven't seen it because I... Wh- wait, what? Because I haven't seen so many movies. It's Because I watch so much TV that it's like movies take, take like a backseat. I am not... <laughs> writing a book with you until you've at least seen the first Indiana Jones. I and know. I need to. Raiders need of the to. Lost Ark. Oh, she. Okay. Well, now okay. she's drinking out Perfect. of my. Need some there water. All right. Um, but when I was a kid, we lived by like a forest, right? And so. This is Everett. Yes. This is Everett. W. Yeah. Uh, we have a ton of kids in my neighborhood. Tons, boys and girls. Me and my sister were three years apart, so, um, we had friends in our age group, and. The boys in our neighborhood went to the woods and they came back and they had like a a plastic sack, you know, like from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And so it's summertime. Nobody's wearing shoes. Like we were wild kids, you know. And uh, we go over to the boys and I say, oh, what's in that sack? And they dump, they turn the bag inside out. And it's like, I don't, it looked like a hundred garden snakes, but it was, I don't know, probably 20 slithering everywhere ever since. Can't can't do it oh did they go on your feet or anything oh yeah they were slithering all over our feet and we were freaking out and since then since i was like eight years old i can't even look at them on like a screen so real quick story Mm -hmm. i was at lance's house up off mulholland i believe it was and i remember there was a dead snake in front of the gate and she texted me it was mm -hmm. like tony can you come down and move the snake out of the way like she wouldn't even drive over a dead snake i couldn't like she was in a big car and wouldn't drive over it it wasn't like she had to walk by it nope it was and you put it like in the the bushes or something but it's like tail was sticking out (laughs) and so i like i had to punch in the gate code and I like unroll the window and like stick my hand really quick. Like I am, it's, it's irrational, but like I can't fix it. Yeah. If you have not watched Indiana Jones by the end of this month, I will not release your episode until you do. Okay, I will. I just can't watch the snake bit. Well, it's only for a few seconds and he hates him too. So you'll just have like you. something to Common. connect but he's over. Like, he's like an adventurer. Right. Like, how can you be afraid of You're snakes? an adventurer. You move three states. You <laughs> yeah. went to Vegas. Come you on. work all over the country. Well, no, you but deal he, with celebrities. You'll you only manage do New York 20. six months at a time. Like yeah. you, you are the archaeologist of our day. But he is like, yeah, what he's an archaeologist. Yeah. Is that like his profession? Yeah. yeah so like you're going to encounter outdoorsy things right. like snakes and reptiles and amphibians and i saw that you guys you have those vhs tapes back there yep. yes i do I saw, I saw you have top gun and i just watched it again last night so good are you it's, excited for top gun too i actually am i am, I am too. too yeah i am when, too when does it come out i think it was supposed to come out last summer but i think now it's like, they I think now it's closer to christmas Oh my gosh! Can we can we go see it oh, together? Yeah, yeah can you yeah. can, be can so you get fun. us a pass? Like, we'll, we'll I mean, I'll make I sure wish. there's no snakes in the theater. <laughs> Do you know whatsoever. Tom Cruise's assistant? Maybe we can get on the red carpet. I don't. I think you have to be a Scientologist to be. Ah, uh, you know? probably. All right. Yeah. So there is a little little tiny bookstore video store uh-huh. up in. Uh, what is it? It's not New Hall. It's up by Magic Mountain, and they still sell VHS tapes because they're really hard to get a hold of. Really? And uh, so it's like the Amoeba the... music of VHFs. Oh, VHFs. nice. Yeah, so you walk in there, it's just rows of VHSs, which you, VHSs, mm-hmm. which you can't even really find anymore. But I just went up there and I bought all those for like 20 bucks. I love that. I've seen all those. Just just all of my favorite. Any movie I saw as a kid growing up, I'm like, oh. Pretty Woman. I'm Gary mean... Marshall. I grew up working around Gary Marshall because my best friend oh, worked cool. for him. He I was am... an assistant as well. My friend was Penny Marshall's assistant. Oh, uh, wait, yeah. Gina? No, Kelly. It, it was, oh, okay. it wasn't, I don't think it was for very long, but it was years ago. I mean, oh, so okay. long ago, but um, yeah, I actually worked for Beverly D'Angelo. Oh, yeah. From the vacation movies yeah. for a while. And we're still friends. She is, talk about a storyteller. This woman has 
the best stories I've ever heard in my life. Amazing. Get her on our podcast, please. Mm-hmm. I know, I'll tell I'll her. She you. would love Money. to. I'm Maybe. like, she she will be here for three days. Like, Perfect. she literally has so many stories. Best. Yeah, I worked with her. She did, uh, shot a pilot with Chevy Chase. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't get picked up, but it was great. So I got to meet him, too. He was he was nice, I mean, to me, but you hear, you know, all horror those stories, horror yeah. stories. But, right. but he, was, he was fine to me. Um, but, yeah, so she... I mean, I remember watching Vacation, you know, like as a child and Christmas, like yeah. all of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she just, she's great. Like, talk about a legend. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And we, she, we uh, love to have her own. she, um, dated and has kids with Al Pacino as well. Yep. And so I, um, he lives in Beverly Hills and I had to drop his daughter off. I took her to a Vamps concert. It's like a boy band from yeah. the UK. So I took her to a Vamps concert and she was like, come in and see my room you know I think she was like 14 at the time so I go in and there's Al like in his pajamas Mm. he's like hey could not have been nicer my dad would have had a heart attack it's my dad's favorite actor of all time time. but yeah he was very very sweet offered me a cough drop oddly (laughs) it was so weird I was like you know usually it's like water you know whatever snacks coffee he's like Oh, do you want a cough drop? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to turn down a cough drop from, from Al Pacino. Yeah. So. Did you, do you still have it like on a shelf unwrapped? Oh, no, I ate it. I what? ate it. No. <laughs> no. Will you accept your Oscar speech someday and you'd be like, I'd like to thank Al Pacino for this, for cough, this drop. cough drop. It inspired me. It's yeah. why I am where I am today. That's amazing. Yeah. No, he was great. So, and she's great. So. It was, it's good. It's a pretty interesting life you lead, Lisa. I know. Somebody asked me the other day, like, who is the worst celebrity I've ever met? And I'm like, honestly, everybody's been pretty nice Mm -hmm. that I've met. But yeah. Yeah. Who's the best celebrity you've ever met? Oh, Taylor Swift. Oh, sorry, Lance. Sorry, Lance. Besides, Lance, Lance you're number two. Count. The title of this count. podcast is Sorry, Lance. Sorry, Lance, right? <laughs> uh, no, Taylor Swift. She was really, really sweet. I liked her a lot. The talented young woman, right? I there. mean, right? Yeah. So talented. I'm so, she's just such I a. I don't care if you don't like force. her music. Like, come on. You have to like, respect her business. 100%. Oh, 100%. Like, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, her marketing is so spot on. Like, I don't know. I just, I'd love to, like, be with her for a week and just pick her brain right. and just see how she like ticks. Yep. Mm-hmm. I also think not only her marketing, she's almost like ahead of the game. Yeah. Like she's like, I see what's going to happen two years from now and I'm going to yeah. be that person to start it. Mm-hmm. And what like a, an amazing songwriter. Right. Like, yeah, I just, I love her. I could gush about Taylor all day. <laughs> Lance, you might be losing someone very soon. <laughs> Do you know Taylor. her assistant? I don't. I heard she doesn't have an assistant. Oh, my God. Her management probably takes care right, of all right, of right. her stuff. But, and maybe now she Which has Which I'm one. sure is a team. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she has like a full, yeah. you know, a full staff. But yeah, she, um, you know, she, she worked hard for her success and it's, I'm glad that she has it. So what's on the horizon for you and, and Lance? Um, I know you're doing the podcast. I'm doing the podcast. Do you still uh, guest on his podcast? He doesn't have it anymore. He's too busy. Oh. Like to do, he was doing a daily podcast. Yeah, so like, that went for like four years or five years. No, the daily one went for a year. Oh, sorry. The, oh no, the radio show. Yes, that, that went. One, that for was Sirius XM. XM yeah. right, and right, that right, was right. live two hours a day. So when he did the podcast, he's like, "This is so much easier because mm-hmm. it's like you don't have that live element." Right. Cause that's like, yeah, that, that's a little nerve wracking. It we, was. That's it, why we don't do live here. We yeah. Can, we yeah. No. Edit out the planes that fly over. Uh, and, and, and anything that like you just, you're like, oh uh, no, I don't want that in there. Um, yeah. So he is, I'm trying to think he's on a show right now called unicorn hunters, yep. kind of like shark tank, but these companies are already established. Um, so he's doing that. He's having kids in, uh, super exciting. Yeah. In the fall. Yeah. Uh, October ish. Kids plural, plural uh, twins. twins. Yeah, um, yeah, toes. Oh, snap. So yeah, so he's got that that big well, project coming up. But that's because you love being an aunt, so that's gonna be exciting for you. Yeah, yeah. As long as I'm not the mother, I'm yeah. good. Um, <laughs> so he's got that. A uh, couple other things in development that were just kind because of, obviously the pandemic really slowed right. slowed things down. 
And then for me, I've got, yeah, the podcast. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Well, Tony's got a good idea for a new boy band for guys in their 40s. I love it. And we both want to be in it. We just need I think a it was name. an SNL skip, but I'm just going to bite the name off. Seven degrees Celsius. I think, yeah. I think we just need <laughs> five more guys. I think that guys. was SNL. It was an SNL skip when they were on, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I would like that. to be into that band if that's a yeah. Po- yeah. boy band. Do you dance? I do. He okay, does dance. Well, he actually is phenomenal. I'm like a clapper and yeah yeah but yeah. you got the face so <laughs> face <laughs> talent like we're good to go Maybe will you manage us I, okay i will manage you i appreciate that i can't i can't uh uh, predict success on that if no. I'm your manager. But it's totally fine. <laughs> Just don't be the Lou Perlman of uh, our... Yeah. No. That part too. I, I couldn't do anything businessy either. I I can barely do math. I'm like <laughs> so horrible. They'll um, work for free. No, we won't. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. <laughs> Just get him on this. Um, yeah. So other than that, you know, I'm just doing my th- same thing. Same so are thing you still, is it a full-time gig now still or are you? Yeah. I mean, yes. 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 And then I just do my podcast once a week so it doesn't take it. too much time. Yeah. But but yeah, no. And I'm, you know, I like to travel. Where can people find the podcast? On anywhere podcasts are available. Like, uh, And tell us the title again, please. Oh, Laugh Out Loud with Lisa. I like alliteration. If you yeah. are <laughs> watching us on YouTube, please don't be offended by the little puppy on our desk right now because it's who totally be, upstaging who be, you. Who could be I offended? I know. I was like, Monsters? no one's paying attention to any of us right now. Yeah. You know what? They're That's just looking okay. at Leona. I right? Love it. Hi. You are the sweetest. Um, yeah. So we we will see what happens for me next. I have no idea. I mean, someday I plan to move back to Everett. Not anytime soon, mm-hmm. but. But someday, all my family's there. I miss my niece and nephew and my parents and my sister and brother-in-law. So someday I'll, I'll get back there. But I don't know what I do for work. Well, that, well, that actually, that actually leads, leads me us, to two, yeah. two, two questions. Oh. One is mine, and then one is the one that we ask everybody as we start to that. wrap up yeah. a podcast. One sure. is, what was one of your favorite books you read over quarantine? Over quarantine. Oh, I've read so many. Okay, just one well, more pops okay. in <clears throat> It was on the end of quarantine. Okay. It's called Who is Maud Dixon? Who is Maud Dixon? So it's a mystery okay. of this woman, Maud Dixon. She, uh, I believe she wrote books. The problem is I read so much. Once I'm done with a book, I can't really remember it, right? Like, I just know if I liked it or not. I'm on Goodreads. I don't know if... Are you on Goodreads, Angel? Oh, it's the best. You rate your books and then your friends can see, oh, you like this book? Uh, I want to read this book. I don't run into a lot of people that like to read. So when I do, I'm like, oh, nerd, no, nerd, I, I love squared. I this love. is great. But again, not like smart books. It's like, you know, mysteries and things. But um, yeah, so you should, people should check that book out. It, it's, I mean, I think it's already optioned. I'm pretty sure I looked it up. Reese Witherspoon probably has the rights. Yeah. <laughs> we have very <laughs> similar tastes. So every book I check into... This is Hello Sunshine or Plan B, Brad Pitt's company. So, ah, yeah. Gotcha. So, All yeah, right. Well, uh, Ma, who is Maude Dixon is mm-hmm. one. And that leads me to the question we ask everybody as we start to wrap up our podcast. Yeah. What's that? Which is, if you hadn't have made it in this industry mm-hmm. where you currently are, mm-hmm. or maybe you just never, maybe never met Lance and mm-hmm. never moved to LA, what do you think you would be doing if you had stayed in Everett and you were there right now with your family? I mean, I would prob- you be a writer? Would you be no. a news anchor? Do you would think you, you would have went that lawyer rescue? route? No, I think I probably. I mean, been a nanny, been a teacher. Teacher is something that I wanted to do uh, for a while, like kindergarten, first, second mm-hmm. grade, until you start like not liking your teacher. You know, I feel right. like that comes around third, fourth grade. But yeah, I thought about that. Um, or high school. I think that that would be fun. And coach cheer. That like, I feel like I would do that. I'd probably be married and I probably would have had kids. If you stayed in like if a I smaller stayed. town. Yeah. Didn't branch out. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, all of my friends are married with kids. Yeah. I'm on, only single one. Um, which is so bizarre because here it's like I don't the have opposite. a lot of married no. friends with kids. Any so. really big city usually. Right. It's not, yeah. Because nobody wants to commit in LA. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to commit to plans, right? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. you know, it's like you ask me if I want to do something on a, a, a Tuesday. You ask me on Tuesday if I want to hang out Friday, and I'm like, yeah. And then Friday rolls around, and I'm like, <sighs> I'm tired. Yeah. I just want to hang out and you read. Get nine books to read. <laughs> I know it's true. That's all I want to do is read. But and play I mean, with the dog. 
I mean, look at her. It's Just like she's auditioning for something. Yeah. You got the part. You got the part. We already like you. Are you crying? She looks like a mini oh. golden. Yeah, she does a long one. And Come we on. don't, we still don't, what, what mix? Uh, I don't feel know. like she's definitely got some wiener dog in her. Wiener dog. Um, may, she's, I don't think Chihuahua, somebody asked me that, but she's not like, it's Chihuahuas the, are really yappy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, yeah, she's. She's so sweet. She is. She's the best. Um, well, I appreciate you taking the time out to course, come. I mean, thank you for having me. I mean, we me. planned this, but you know, it actually happened. Yeah, yeah, you came through. You I committed. Came through. You committed. I wasn't it wasn't. Si- oh, my mic just cut out. Uh oh. That, that happens. Uh, when, there we go. Wait, are we back? You were. There, and then there we there go. Is. Yes. Yeah. It. Uh, it's. Uh, it's hard to get people to follow through on their word in this town. Sometimes it is hard. No, you guys all have to come on my podcast. Oh my god, it'd be so fun. Love to. So fun. If we, well, we've never loud. been invited on a on a podcast, yeah, I never know. Oh well, you'll have to come on mine. That would be fun. It's like thirty minutes, forty five minutes. Tops. Perfect. Well, I will commit to it now so that I can cancel to it for <laughs> tomorrow. You know what? Is that cool? I, yes, I'm really easy. Like um, my best friend, uh, her name is Marnie. I don't know. I don't know if you've met her, Tony. I think I have. Um, but we have like this whole thing. If we don't, if we make plans and like the night comes and we're not feeling it, we're just like you know what, I'd rather stay home. And the other ones, oh, we're always cool. Like, I'm, if you cancel I respect plans that, on you, me, yeah. I'm okay. You're like, thank you. I'm like the Larry <laughs> David. You know that Larry yeah, David, yeah. Uh, when he's like, Curious, thank you yeah. for canceling plans. Yes, 100%. I'm, I'm that person. Not that I don't want to see you, but it's just like. It's a lot of effort. It I'm not feeling a lot it right of effort. Now. Yeah, I get it. I, but yeah, I probably, it sounds like. I get a, a lot of friends different. that ask me, they're like, um. I got a, this great girl. I want you to meet. I'm like, where does she live? Like Venice. I'm like, nope. she nah. might as well live in Venice, Italy because <laughs> I'm never going to see her. her. I'm never going to see her. Honestly, <laughs> I see friends that live in a different state more than I see friends right. that live at the beach. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not driving. I live in the yeah. valley. I'm like, I'm not going over there. Because that's an airplane trip yeah. yep. with some snacks and a little mask and you land yeah. and you're fine. Having to drive on the 405. No. Not going to make it. Yeah. Unless I like, you know, uh, good friends of mine live in Venice too. And I'm like, well, I'll come if I can stay the weekend. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to make that drive yeah. for a couple well, hours. Do that? No, not me. Nope. <laughs> well, you made the drive here to Burbank, California. I, we appreciate it. It was, it was not bad for me. Okay. I live okay. in Sherman Oaks. So. Oh, okay. Good, Pop, good, good. Skip skipping a jump. Well, thank you for being here today. Um, for everyone who um, watches us on YouTube to see this cute little adorable animal sitting on our table right now and lisa <laughs> and lisa oh that's right we had somebody else here and lisa oh that's right that's no, right. she that's right. she's allowed to take center stage perfect love it uh thank you for everyone who watches us on youtube um for everyone who uh what listens to us only uh on spotify itunes google play we appreciate you please hit those subscribe like buttons uh that makes us happy and helps us out um, I think that's all I have yeah, yeah, for today. You got anything yeah. you want to add? I do not. I just love the fact that I've known Lisa for 15 years and I she know. came on the podcast. Of course. Amazing. Of course. Lisa Anytime. Del Campo, thank you for being here today, oh, for setting for aside an hour of Father's Day Sunday to be here with us. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's all for now. We will see you next time, everybody. Bye. Have a good week. Bye.